Hi, my name is Nathan Florsheim, and I am a photo and video instructor at the Evanston Art Center. Thanks to the Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation, we are able to present you with a series of video tutorials to help you with your photography process at home. In this video, we will be going over how to print your photos through Photoshop. I highly recommend watching our video on how to resize your image before this, as that is a key point in how to do this process. When printing your photos, it's important to make sure that there are no areas that are too bright or too dark, especially if they are so bright that they are pure white or so dark that they are pure black. The reason for this is when you print images, if there's an area that is so bright to the point of being pure white, the printer actually won't even lay down any ink in that area. It'll just be the paper white. And if your image is so dark to the point of being pure black, It'll just lay down lots of black ink and it'll be very muddy. You can avoid this by following our instructions in our camera raw videos where we go over how to enable clipping and make sure that there are no areas that are too bright or too dark. Or before you actually print your photo, you can double check this by using the curves layer. When you open up your curves layer, on the right and left corner of the histogram, you'll see a dark gray and white triangle. These both indicate the brightest and the darkest points of your image. So if you drag the one on the far right, it'll start to progressively make the brightest part of your image brighter and brighter. And if you do the one on the left, it'll make it darker and darker. This is helpful for printing as you can also use these sliders to view the clipping in your image. If you hold down the option key on your keyboard and click and drag, your screen will turn black or white and you'll start to see some colors emerge as you move the slider, which are indicating areas where there's clipping occurring. I always like to use this before printing to make sure that there is no clipping happening, and if there is, make an adjustment that is needed. If there is a small amount of clipping present in your image, you can just use the curves layer to try and get rid of it and make up for it. But if there is a large amount of clipping, that means you have some areas that are blown out or too dark. So I would recommend actually going back to the camera raw editor and using the highlights, whites, shadows, and black sliders that are in that tool to try and get rid of all that clipping and set your image up a little bit better for printing. Once you've checked to see if there's any clipping, you can do any last minute adjustments to your image using curves or any other adjustment layers. Oftentimes I find with some papers, images look a little more dull than they do on screen since it will no longer be backlit. So sometimes I will just boost the highlights and the contrast in my image a little bit before printing. Nothing drastic, but just a little bit more to have the print look how I want. There are so many different types of paper though, so this all varies on the paper you're using, and I recommend doing some test prints to get familiar with the material. Now that our image is looking ready to print, we have to do one of the most important steps in the process, and that's to make sure that our image is properly sized for the size of paper that we're printing on. Once again, I would make sure you've seen our resizing video as it will be very helpful. But all you need to do is go up to image, image size, and you wanna make sure that the resample box is unchecked. From there, you can adjust the width or the height to make sure it fits on your paper size. So for example, if we're printing on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you always wanna leave a little bit of room for the borders to make sure that the image doesn't get cropped off. So I would want to make my image 10 and a half inches wide, and that will automatically make it seven inches tall as the proportions are locked. You can see that the resolution goes up there, which is a good thing. I find that the higher the resolution, the better in printing, but only if you're just resizing, not through resampling. Anything over 300 is in a really, really good spot. Once you start getting below 200 in the low 100 range, that's pretty dangerous and you may notice some pixelization in your print as you're really pushing the limits of how big that file size can be. Once everything is sized properly, you can go ahead and hit OK, and now we can actually move on to the print window by going up to File, Print. This is where Photoshop allows you to take a lot of control in the printing process and why I prefer to use it when I'm printing photographs. You can choose which printer in the top area where it says printer. From there, we want to go down to color handling and change it from printer manages colors to Photoshop manages colors. What this allows us to do is assign specific profiles to the printer based on the paper that you're using. There's some that come pre-installed, 
But right now I'm going to be printing on a paper by Moab and the paper is Intrada Natural. I downloaded this profile from Moab's website and there are instructions on how to install it onto your computer. All paper providers should have something similar. What this allows you to do is tell the printer what paper you're printing on so it knows exactly what to do in terms of the ink and the colors to make the print look as close to how it looks on screen as possible. From there, we want to make sure that our paper is properly oriented. You can do this under layout where you can toggle between landscape and portrait. Next, we'll navigate to the print settings. And from here, we can adjust the actual size of the paper. For this example, we'll be printing on a US letter size, which is eight and a half by 11. But if you click on the paper size drop down, you have many, many options to choose from, and you can even add a custom size. This is what you would use if you're using an abnormally sized paper or you're printing from a roll, which not all printers can do. To do that, you click the plus button and you're gonna go to the paper size and you will want the width to always be the widest point of the paper possible and then the height, however high you need it to be. From there, you can adjust the margins so they're all even if you'd like. If you just hit okay then, it'll save it as an untitled profile. So it's always good when you're creating it to double click on the name untitled. And I like to just name it the actual dimensions that I'm using. Once we have gotten the size confirmed and we know that it's the size that our paper is, we wanna click on the drop down where it says layout and change it to quality and media. This is another area where we're gonna be specifying the paper type to the printer. So for this case, I know that it is a matte photo paper. So I'm gonna click on the media type, navigate to photo papers and matte photo paper. You can also change the paper source. Typically the printers use top feed and the print quality. I've found that high is really great. I rarely need to go highest. It will make the actual print time quite a bit longer. Once I hit save, I actually get a notification pop up on screen. This is because I'm using a Canon printer and for this specific type of paper, it has margin regulation. This means that the print would need very wide borders and I like to disable this so I can use the full size of paper. So to do that, you will navigate to paper detailed settings and check the box that says cancel margin regulation. This will allow you to use the full size of paper for some specific media types. Once you check that box and hit save, you can just hit OK on the notification and you'll be good to go. Not all printers will require this though, so only do this if you need to and if that notification pops up. You can now see in the preview window, something looks a little wrong where the paper size is a lot bigger than my image. This happens when you accidentally choose the wrong size of paper in the print settings. And so you wanna go back, make sure that you click on US letter and double check always that that preview looks how it should because if something is off, that is how it will print it and that can result in an image coming out very small or way too big and being cropped. Now you can go ahead and hit print if you're ready to go and the printer's all loaded and turned on. But I'm also gonna show you a different process if you wanna print an image in black and white. In that case, I'm just gonna hit done, navigate and have my black and white layer on go through the same process of opening the print window, but this time I'm gonna change it back to printer manages colors. The reason for this is you can then tell the printer specifically that you're printing in black and white, and that'll ensure that your prints don't have any slight color cast to them, which is a frequent problem when printing black and white on inkjet printers. Now we'll go to print settings, click on layout, go down to color matching, and change it to Canon color matching. Then we're gonna to go to quality and media and check the box that says black and white photo print. We can then go ahead and hit save, okay, and print. That does it for this video on printing with Photoshop. I recommend spending some time to get to know your printer as well by watching videos on the specific model or reading the instructions, as even if you follow this tutorial step-by-step, step, if something is set up wrong with your printer, you'll run into issues along the way. Once again, we would like to thank the Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation for providing the funding to make these videos possible. Stay tuned for more videos covering Photoshop, other editing softwares, and camera tips and tricks. Thanks.